Chapter 42 Aaron Simpkins must have sat there for hours, clad only in a sheer bra and blue scrub pants. The sleeve tattoo of a coiling snake ran the length of her exposed right arm as its glossy, colorful skin drew attention to the Greek words it underscored. She should have felt the coolness of the room, but she didn't. She wasn't aware of the temperature or the people who entered and exited. She simply collected the details as the reporters continued to give them. Most of what was said she'd heard several times before, but she was waiting for that new piece of information, that newly discovered or unreported fact that might lead to finding Marari Varadaraj, or at least give more insight into why someone had taken him. She listened to speculations. She heard the news commentators hint at political terrorism, religious unrest. They were probing every possible angle. Any reason why a young prince from India would be kidnapped on American soil. The cardiothoracic surgeon was amazed and stunned that in 30 minutes, the president of the United States was going to address the public. Was Marari Varadaraj that important? Who was this man that she shared so much of her life with? She felt as though she didn't really know him. She couldn't fathom his significance, his wealth, or his political ties. She felt the blood in her veins slowing down as she too waited to hear more. She tried to calm the mounting fears. Was he even alive after all this time? When was the last time anyone had heard from him or spoken to him? She wanted a shot of vodka. The thought sprang into her head as though the desire to taste the strong intoxicating drink had never truly left her. She felt the intensity of the urge. She could almost feel the neck of the bottle within her grasp. She seemed to smell its familiar odor and long for its medicating power. It had the amazing ability to alter things and to make her forget. Aaron refused to move. She wanted that first drink so badly, but she knew that if she took it her life would resume a path that she was desperately trying to avoid. She had come so far in the last couple of weeks. She couldn't return to that place. She couldn't be that woman who gave up just because her world was falling apart. And it was definitely doing that. She had to be strong. Aaron reached down into the back pocket of her scrubs. She pulled out a cell phone and dialed the one person she trusted with all of her secrets, her person, the only friend who could help her get through this. She dialed Ileana Martinez's number blindly through tearful eyes. She needed her former roommate, the woman who had strengthened her and coaxed her back from a very dark place in her life the friend who had convinced her to live long after Marari Varadaraj had walked out of her life. And here she was again, on the edge of destruction, longing for a bottle of vodka when she should have been clinging to sobriety with every ounce of her being. But as Aaron watched the President of the United States of America address the nation, all she wanted was a damn drink.